Open up Microsoft Internet Explorer or Firefox or Chrome, your choice. Type in the IP address of 192.168.0.10. That's just the IP address I assigned to the vision system. And it communicates with the Panic Robot Controller. We just need to use Vision Setup right here. Click on that. There are three files that we're going to be interested, or three major things to go through that we're interested in. Camera setup tools, camera calibration tools, and the vision process tools. We'll go right down the line. First one here is camera setup tool. Create a new file. Just stay with progressive scan camera as a default. That's just fine. And uh, give the name something meaningful. erase me too and say over here okay creates the file double click on it to open it and we have a picture of what's uh, underneath the camera right now progressive scan the port number is one the camera type is this the exposure time is 33 milliseconds the mode is VGA it is not robot mounted it's uh, fixed mounted so we do not click on that box and what we're getting at is there's absolutely nothing you need to do on this screen. So we can save it and close it. We're done. Then we go on to the next one, Calibration Tools. Click on that, create the file. Grid Pattern Tool, that sounds good. R-A-S-E-M-E-2. -E Say OK. Open up Erase Me 2 because I'm going to erase these when I'm done. And now that's your grid pattern. We're going to have the, uh, we're going to have to jog the robot and get that um, out of the way. So not train, grid cal, camera's not selected, so select it. And we're going to pick up the uh, erase me to camera. That's what we had before. Exposure time was default, nothing to do. Nothing to do here. Application frame, you should be using number eight. Grid spacing between there and here is 15 millimeter. It's right on the paper. So we use 15 millimeter here. On the 200 IC robots, the grid spacing is 30 millimeter. And that would come up for you automatically also. Number of planes, there's just one. And is this held by the robot? No, it's on the table. So leave that alone. Calibration grid frame. That is a user frame. We use number nine for this one. Projection. Projection is perspective. Leave that alone. Focal distance. Leave that alone. Do set the frame. And we're going to have to move this apparatus on the robot out of the way. But we'll just go ahead and say find right now. It goes up into this window. It wants you to say, OK. It's going to try and find these dots. It did it. And actually, that's not too bad. That, that could work. We got some red lines that are not where they should be. So give me a second. I'm going to jog the robot out of the way. I can find my controller, get the um, world mode here, and do a minus x. Just get the robot out of the way retake a picture. I've moved it out of the way. And let's do uh, find again. Move up into this window and click on OK. It's trying to find calibration data. You are to look at these dots. Now what we can do is ex uh, zoom in a little bit here. And what we're looking at is to see if the green is over the red. We want to see green. The red means it's off a little bit. And here we've got a, down here we've got a, uh, a problem. This is not really a 15 millimeter location. These are good. These are off a little bit, but not enough for us to worry about. So I'm going to go and manually eliminate this because it will affect the calibration accuracy a tad. Here's how we do it. We snapped the find. We found everything. So we're basically done on this page. But let's go to points. 
do a sort on air. And we've got a few of these that are higher than a one. We want everything to be under one. Well, you got a whole bunch of them here, but let's just start eliminating the first ones. And then some of these will come back and be under a 1.0 or 1 point something. We, we want all these numbers in this row, column, I mean, this column to be 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, but not a one. So get rid of the first big hitter, go down here to the point number, you have to click on delete. Okay, recalculate it, say okay. And let's zoom back out a little bit so we can kind of see. I'm trying to get rid of this one down here in the lower left-hand corner. Um, I'm going to pick number 44, go to the box, type in 44, hit delete. Don't hit the enter key, hit delete. And uh, that was calculated, it's redoing it again. And number 80, let's get rid of number 80 because that's bigger than a 1. Hit, click on delete and uh, click OK. I'm trying to get rid of this, so let's keep going here. Number 70 and hit, click on delete. I keep saying hit, but I mean to click on it. Still there, we've still got an error, we've got an issue. So there's a number 70 and click delete. Calibration was calculated, it's redoing it. And notice that that lower left-hand corner here, that's gone. All these are looking pretty good. In other words, it was able to recalibrate itself. We're looking for blues on the X and blues on the Y direction. And uh, greens overlaid on red. We really should not see any red at all, but there's a little bit, not a problem. This is good. Even though I have uh, one that's real close to a one, all of our numbers are underneath one point something. So this is good. Save this calibration data. And we're done with our grid. You don't do anything back on this page. If you do, you'll have to go back through and delete points again because it'll find this uh, stuff. So we're done. Uh, take a new picture here to look at it and uh, close this window out. Move right on to the vision process tool. Make a file. Keep the default. E-R-A-S-E-M-E-2. -E Go down here and click OK. It says, hey, that was already used, so I'm going to go erase three. I already used two. OK, come back here, open it up. And what this is for is to define the object you're looking for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go here and snap a picture of what the... That's okay. Let's tell it a little something so it can at least take a picture. Not selected. We want... We'll take Erase Me 2. It's using the camera information from Erase Me 2. We can expand this a little bit. Kind of blow it up a little bit there. There, we can see the entire grid. That's kind of nice. Now, there's nothing on it. I'm going to set a part down on the grid. Take a picture here, one snap. There's the part. I'm going to move the part to a different location. Come up here, snap the picture. And if you're just kind of lining stuff up, you can click on here, which means just keep doing the picture. And you can see me moving the part around here. You have to delay a little bit. So I'll leave the part right there. Go back, snap one picture, okay, it's fixed. We basically don't do anything along in here until you get all done defining your part. We need to do a snap and find, but it doesn't know what to look for, so I'm making a slight mistake. I can't do this reference data box until I've defined the part. And by defining the part, I want to tell it this is the object I'm looking for. GPM locator, that's your um, geometric pattern match, GPM, geometric pattern match. Just come down here and click on teach the pattern. It's going to put a box out here. We have to zoom a little bit. Let's zoom in. And uh, I'll zoom a little more. And go back to your pointer tool and move this box. We want to make a nice box that will go around the entire part. Go grab the handle down here, drag it. Now, it's going to ignore 
these little black dots. But we're going to tell it this is the shape of the object we're looking for. So just click OK. It'll do the best it can to figure out that shape. And there it is. Oh, we've got a little error. It thinks that's part of the part. So we probably should go in and get rid of that. Or we can cheat by just moving the, uh, moving the object, get it off of here. So I'm just going to cheat because I'm a little bit lazy. How's that? There. Now, oh, a little bit of black in there. How's that? Oh, I like that. So snap one picture. Let's go back and reteach it. So teach the pattern again. Zoom in. Just makes it easier to see. Go to the pointer tool, move the box, and let's let's try to get it so we're not on any of these other little black dots. There we go. Make sure you put the box around your entire object. Here I got a little problem. Let's stretch that out. That's great. Teach OK. All right. If you teach it, you may have a reference. You know, you can read that for yourself. There, that's the object, and I like that. Don't need to set the origin. You don't need to center the origin because um, it did that automatically, the origin. And uh, orientation, none, because there's no orientation with a circular part. Scoring 70%. Anything above 70%, it's considered a good part. Anything below 70%, it will be a bad part. And there's where the score would show up. Basically, we don't do anything in here. No mask, no nothing. And uh, save this. Go back to our vision process. And now we can come down to the reference data and set our reference position. And it said we need to do a find. So snap the picture and find the object. And there it is. Let's zoom in. Just be sure it's um, green. It found the part, and it thinks that's the orientation of it. But that's OK. It's circular. And it gave it a score of 98.9. Now remember, anything above 70 is a good part. So that's great. That's real good. Uh, basically, we're done. It can find parts now. So let's set that reference position again just for the fun of it. It is set. We'll save it. And we're done. We can close that out, and we can close, in fact, close everything out if you want. The next step is to write a program, and I can show you how to do that, but I'll show you how to write a program for finding a part in the next video.